Hey everybody, I'm here in the shop of Roma Custom Bike to reassemble the Springer fork of my 91 Softel that we've taken apart in part one of this episode. I'm here with uh, Janusz Polski Raid Wilczek that will give me a hand. So let's get it started. In this episode of Roma Custom Bike we're going to reassemble the Springer fork that we have just disassembled in part one and to do so we start with a rigid fork and we're putting it back into the neck of the frame making sure all the bearings stay in place and we screw the main bolt onto the stud that went through the neck of the bike. So, we start by reassembling the spring system by introducing the lower spring, which was labeled, inserting the stops right here, the upper spring goes right in there, we get our front springer, we set it down, we push the threaded rod through and we screw in the little bolt just a little bit we proceed with the second spring system so after we have assembled both inside spring sets we go ahead and install the outside spring is uh, rubber bushing and um, it's washer. We proceed with both of them, making sure we install everything properly, and we go ahead and place it inside the holes in the rigid fork. Now we have to install again the spring compressor we used to take them apart. For doing that, we screw back in the rod in the light fixture holder and we put a bolt for good measure and we start closing in with a butterfly bolt at the bottom starting to compress the springs. Janos is holding it because we still have to place the little safety bolts that will ensure that the compressor doesn't come out of its placement. Now before compressing it we have to find two pieces of string to tie up the two forks together so they don't spring forward. So let's do that. So Janus is now tying up the rigid fork with the spring fork together so they don't spring up while we're compressing them. You know, safety first, if that sprung up with the compressed spring, that would be um, a disaster. So we're making sure that everything is secure before starting to compress the spring, which we'll start doing right now by twisting the butterfly nut at the bottom of the tool we created. So now we have compressed the spring enough to place the rubber bushing in its place, playing around with the threaded rod to make sure it goes in right, the washer, and then the spring, making sure the bottom bolt is pushed up compressing a little bit the top spring and making a rotating motion until it grips in. We proceed with the other side. Rubber washing in position. Big washer and spring holding the bottom and screwing the top in while compressing the spring. Now if you remember from part one 
we measured when we were taking this apart how much of the threaded rod was sticking out of the top of this bolt. We recorded it in our book and it was 10 millimeters. So we're going to tie the top springs until they actually show 10 millimeters of rod. And I'm looking for my caliper right now that I cannot find, but as soon as I find it, we'll measure it. Okay, so we finished screwing the big bolt on top of the top spring, and here we have exactly 10 millimeters on both of them, which means that the compression ratio of the springs is the same as when we took them apart. Now, all we have to do is finish screwing the bottom bolts nice and tight and proceed with assembling the lower part of the Springer fork assembly which includes the uh, rocker arm and the wheel and everything else so let's finish screwing and proceed with that now we are finished compressing and screwing on the top springs now what we're gonna do is we have cut the strings that kept the front fork and the rear fork together we're gonna assemble the rocker arm the rocker arm is a little tricky because it's got two half ball bearings one goes on one side then it has to be fitted onto the rear fork and then the other the bolt with the other half of the ball bearing has to be driven right through and screwed in with the little washer that has to fit perfectly into the hole in the rocker. All right? I'm gonna screw it in. Then we have the back bearing retainer, which is this big bolt that goes onto the rocker arm. And then by compressing and using the bolt washer and screw that we kept from this assembly we drive it through the front ball bearing we add the washer and then we tie the bolt here is the first rocker arm all nicely put together uh, remember to push in the other side while you're assembling this side so everything aligns nice Get a wrench, start tightening up, we'll proceed with the other side. Now that we have mounted the rocker arms, we can uncompress the spring compressor and release the springs to support the front springer assembly on the road. All it takes is spinning this bolt. So, we're almost done unscrewing the little tool we made. All we need to do is remove the bolt and screw that kept it in place. We can now proceed with screwing in the triple three plaque. And after that, we can continue by installing the wheel, the light, and everything else. In the end, we'll rest, register the steering according to the specification from the Harley Davidson shop manual which uh, we'll talk about in a little bit so let's assemble the plaque so now that the plaque and the springs are all put together we can put the little spring bridge up on top with this washer and bolt so that the compression radio we've set will remain steady we obviously tie it up with a wrench. So now we can proceed with installing the shock absorber. It goes right into the top hole. It needs to be worked in a little bit because we powder coated the rigid fork. And so, the play of things has changed a little bit. 
that I bet my let is probably her best friend. Now we have to fit the bottom part and we've noticed that it's better coming on from the back and then pushing it forward. We have the screw. This is assembled, now we can proceed with the tire and the light. So let's get on with that. Now we have to install the light, the headlight. To do so we first have to put the bracket that holds it in place. To do so we screw it in with this uh, Allen screw, Allen head screw. And then we proceed with a little wrench. Make sure you keep it in place, the bracket, while you screw it, otherwise it'll spin around on you. Now we put the headlight by placing it on the bracket and inserting the screw, the washer and the bolt. This front end is starting to get its shape back. How oh, beautiful. A little wrench and we're done. So now we have to install the wheel. To do so, we're gonna insert it in the rocker. Then we're gonna insert the brake bracket then right into the tire. By the way, we have set our jack to raise the bike just enough so everything would align. Then we put a spacer, a tapered uh, spacer with the tapered side towards the wheel. Then the speedo controller, a spacer. We're going to push the axle through and then we add yet another washer, a nice chrome one, and the final bolt. So there we go. All we need is a big wrench and a pair of pliers to tie up our bolt. Thanks Janusz. Now that the tire is on, we can proceed with installing the front calipers for the brake. Um, what we do is uh, spread the pads apart so that they can fit on the, on the rotor. And uh, all it's left to do is screw them onto the bracket we have installed while installing the, the wheel that is uh, pivoting on the front wheel axle. Once this is done, um, all you have to do is uh, fit the oil hoses, something that we won't be doing today, uh, but what we will be doing to complete the brake assembly is getting this uh, retainer that needs to be installed between the, the bracket to keep it in place and the rear rigid fork. And we do that using a bolt in the back that bolts directly in a stud that comes out from the rigid fork, factory made. In the front we secure it with a screw with a washer in the back and a bolt 
on the other side and a washer actually once secured all we need to do is tie it as I said hook up the hose and the brakes are done now we have to install the fender and register the steering so let's do that right now this is one of the pieces that I've uh, described when uh, I was presenting the show is my single-sided fender um, in this case we remove the screw that we've used to secure the brake bracket to the rear um, to the rear fork we set this back in place we slide in the fender nice and tight and we insert a first screw just have to make stuff align we drive the screw through and again in the back a washer and a bolt this uh, is uh, all that is required to install this fender with the fender holder that I built as you can see only one side perfectly installed now what we need to do is register the steering let's do that okay so now we have to register the steering to do so we need a tool that I don't have at the moment but I just want to explain the theory of it to you we have hooked up a little uh, wire with a bolt as a pendulum um, and it's hooked up to the little hole that is um, present on the bottom of the front fender uh, this will mark um, a certain point on the ground at that point I've put a tape measure uh, in my case at 30 centimeters what we do now is to register the steering you have to tie it up the top neck bolt enough so that the wheel will not fall off before about 12-15 centimeters from the center so in our case since the center is marked by the pendulum at 30 it will have to fall at about 45 centimeter on one side and at 15 centimeter on the other side if you're dealing with inches you can do pretty much the same by converting the numbers of centimeters into inches so by tying up the bolt on the top of the neck we will make the steering harder so let's try to explain how this works we have our wheel the pendulum we installed that projects to the floor at the center position and our measuring tape when the wheel is in the center position the pendulum is aligned to the center of our tape to steer the wheel we push it to one side initially we have to apply a soft constant pressure to keep moving the wheel but at one point the wheel will fall on her own this is the falling point and it has to be located about 12 to 15 centimeters from the center position by tightening the bolt on the neck of the bike we can move the full point away from the center position and vice versa that's pretty much it for registering the steering at the end so in this episode of Roma custom bike we have taken apart and reassembled the Springer forks this is very useful for when you have to change bearings in the wheel or in the neck or you want to just clean it up and uh, paint it like I did if you like this video please tell your friends maybe leave a comment or click the like button for now that's it I'm Custom Chaz along with my friend Janusz Polski Rage Wilczek and we say goodbye see you next time
Thank you.